Good afternoon. Hi, uh, hi everyone. It's um, here I am, fully clothed. Thank God. You say? So is Emma. Um, uh, the very much looking forward to this. I'm, I must sound a little bit nervous. I don't normally cook uh, cook in to to an audience, so uh, so go easy on me. If you do have any questions, then uh, by all means just type them in, and uh, and Catherine will uh, will come and uh, relay them to me and I can answer them as I go. So uh, let's get started. So this is really just to lay, uh, set the scene. This is very much the sort of dish or sort of cooking that I do most nights. I cook most nights. Uh, almost every night we uh, we sit down together as a meal as best we can. It doesn't happen every night, obviously, and there are certain people that are, certain kids that are doing different things, but as a general rule, we have a pretty much a sequence. I get home at uh, quarter to six or so, and we're normally eating by about quarter past, and it's pretty much cooked from scratch. Sometimes that's with the pressure cooker, but I'm sure you do. I've got you know, some midweek favourites that work with the kids that I can pretty much bang out pretty quickly. So uh, so let's hit it. Um, as always, before you start a meal, you obviously need to open a bottle of wine. There's normally not much left over from the night before. Let's go back. Let's carry on. Cheers. Oh, sorry, you'll send me cheese. And dukkah. So I'll just quickly grab one of that. Sorry. This is actually after my normal lunch time, so I'm starving, so I've been moving through this quickly. So I hope you've used the dukkha, it's been great. Uh, last uh, uh, weekend I just got some lamb chops, just a bit, very simple, no oil or anything, just push the push the dukkha, or spread it out on the plate, push the dukkha into either side, fried them off, really gave a lovely nutty crunch, so it's um, uh, delicious, so cheers. Sorry, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Okay, no more reading, apologise. <clears throat> okay, now I have something to call my back and throw it on my uh, So, first thing to do is be preparation. So, I have pretty much everything set out. I know what I'm cooking and I've got the ingredients either in my mind or uh, if I'm following the uh, uh, recipe. Um, certainly, most of these recipes, all these recipes, will be on uh, the recipe site by later this afternoon. Many of them are already up there. Um, well, some of them are already up there, but we they were taken by me on my iPhone, and Joyce is going to take a much more artistic photo, and uh, and it'll be much more appetising after this. So, um, so, uh, but all these recipes will be up. Really encourage you to go to the site, use it, use it regularly, and, uh, and please continue uploading. Some of you already started doing that, which is is awesome. We do want to build a recipe community. We want to build out the, uh, the database on the site. So please make sure you uh, make sure you whenever you you. Cook something, just take a quick snapshot, upload it, and um, it only takes a few minutes, and um, yeah, it really builds it out for everyone to benefit. I have washed my hands. Um, knife sharpener. Uh, knives always need to be sharp. I don't do this after, before every meal, but I certainly do it seven times a week. Um, uh, you should need, everyone who has knives needs a knife sharpener. All knives will blunt over time. Uh, so uh, you need to have a knife sharp to keep it sharp. I quickly run under a tap because it just I find it works more effectively if there's a bit on the blade. Um, eight times through this one, eight times through this one, and the knife is sharp. I actually did that earlier, so that's fine. I've got the water onto boil. So the first, so what we're going to be cooking today, and I've got a couple of surprise recipes that I sort of threw in beyond the ingredients that were sent around yesterday. Uh, pretty simple midweek meal. So, particularly coming into this time of year, we have protein invariably. Um, uh, so, today we're doing uh, Cajun salmon. Uh, then there's a series of salads. We're doing a Sicilian, uh, a Sicilian um, grapefruit and, uh, and fennel salad. We're doing a, uh, which I have posted, I did a bottle orange one, but you can do grapefruit, pink grapefruit. Um, uh, we're doing a potato salad uh, with a Dijon um, aioli. And we are doing a pear and blue cheese salad, which is all pretty simple. You will see thrown together pretty quickly. So the the uh, the this is a tripod. I've got this on 
boiling. I've sort of done the Jamie Oliver thing and have the, the water boiling before I start. I've seen these 15 minute meals. So, uh, but broadly, I'm doing what I would do when I get home. So, um, and Tom will be talking to you, the water would have come to the boil normally anyway, but obviously, I don't normally have to talk into a camera. So, just going to quickly dice the potatoes just so they, um, so they cook quickly. So I'm not a trained chef, so it's not particularly elegant, but you get the picture. So I said um, three to four large potatoes, really depends how hungry you are and whether you've got teenage boys. Um, or girls, but boys tend to eat a bit more. So I always or variably cook with the potato with the skins on. Uh, the skin is where a lot of the nutrition is. I don't know if you know, there's basically two foods that you can pretty much survive on that one food, one ingredient alone, that's bananas and potatoes separately. Um, and, but that only applies if you keep the skin on potatoes as roughage, as nutrition, and um, basically it's saving how you deal So water's on the boil. Quickly add some salt. Potatoes in, get a little splash. Once it comes back to boil, it should only take about 10 minutes. I always keep a sink of hot soapy water going, so I can, um, uh, can't do that here, but, uh, but I would normally do that, so that A, I clean as I go, uh, and secondly, um, you know, things where your hands can get it's just pop it straight in. Being a boy, I've always got a tea towel on my shoulder. Um, fry pan fired up and ready to go. Okay, so Sicilian salad. The Sicilian salad is um, is uh, basically it's some sort of citrus. Uh, I have already put up there a blood orange, which is uh, is a fantastic fruit when in the short period it's in season. So that's delicious. Uh, much more commonly is a pink grapefruit. I don't know if you've seen a pink grapefruit, they're uh, they're nowhere near as as tart as a um, as a traditional yellow uh, yeah, white yellow grapefruit, uh, they're, they're really quite sweet. So, uh, so this you segment those. I'll show you how to do that. Some people just slice them. It's not easy to eat. But they're segmented and it's pretty simple to do. It's basically, that um, a rocket, uh, um, wait, um, olives, and I'll get to. It, I can't remember. I'll do it as I go. But I think that's all. Um, and a, uh, and uh, you basically the the. Vinaigrette comes from the uh, from the the acid from the vinaigrette, should I say, comes from the citrus. So, if you haven't segmented uh, some citrus, it's really really simple and fast to do. Um, so you literally chop and tail it. It's a sharp knife, makes that simple. Slice around. That. So then you've got the um, the citrus. If you have not seen these ruby red grapefruits, you can see they're uh, they're a lovely ruby um, you know, pinky pinky orangey colour. They're they're lovely. Now to segment you, you can see the segments. You literally just slice down either side. Very simple. And the segment just comes out. What it means is there's no me membrane on there, so it's when you're having it in a salad. It's just much more pleasant to, to eat and it's pretty fast. So I'm going to do this pretty quickly while Emma comes in and turns you. <laughs> Talk about on the spot. Okay, Hi. Hi everyone. That's pretty cool, I didn't know that. Did you all know that about the potatoes and the bananas? Let's start with you, thank you, David. And you might have observed our wall of fame behind you for all our superstar Golden Whisk and Song of the Year achievers. So yeah, keep your name on the board there. This is looking, looking really good. So I'm segmenting over a bowl so you capture all the juices. So that's the uh, that's going to be the acid in your vinaigrette. There you go. 
So I'm going to do my standard dad joke that the kids groan at every time they actually stop groaning because they say over even groaning is there's no no one wants to have a nude salad. You need to always have your salad perfectly dressed. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So that's pretty much it. Um, uh, depending on how much juice came out, there's a fair amount come out here. You would just give this the um, what's left over, which is just all the membrane bits. You can squeeze to get even more of the uh, the juice out. But I've actually got plenty of juice in there. So and that's the thing you probably can't see in there. It's just the the juice. Um, uh, okay. Dish. 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 Oh. Just one side. Uh, what are we doing now? Um, this is salad. Sorry, I should have had my recipe written out, shouldn't I? Uh, so we'll make the the, uh, the dressing first. So it's pretty simple. It's literally the, you've got the, the acid from the the uh, from the, the citrus, uh, salt and pepper. So always properly season your uh, your salads. And whisk, and uh, who's seen Jamie Oliver and others where he just pours bucket loads of olive oil over the top of the salad, then he pours the vinaigrette and just tosses it? That is not a salad dressing. Salad dressings have to be emulsified, it changes the texture, so they properly coat the, uh, the leaves of the salad. So, uh, so you always have to mix them separately together the, the, acid, and the, uh, uh, the acid and the oil, um, and any other flavouring you've got. I'll be doing, uh, 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 only shortly, um, because if you don't do that, then it just it just doesn't emulsify. You've got two separate liquids which don't naturally want to bind together, uh, an acid and, uh, and an oil. Um, so you, you do need to do them separately. Technically, that uh, dressing should always be one part acid, four parts oil. I also find that a bit oily, so to me it's closer to 50-50. It means it doesn't emulsify properly, but it is a bit healthier. And we do have a lot of salads, so that means a fair amount of water. So that's, you can't see that, but it's it's just doing something as simple as that. It's already thickened up to change the change the texture. But also, it won't necessarily hold like that for too long, so I'll redo it again before I dress it. So the last thing I do before serving up, and we will be serving up um, just a series of platters here um, for, for the meal, um, the last thing I do is throw all the ingredients into the salad dressing whilst the, um, the salad leaves go quite... Um, uh, go go on in. Okay. Sorry. Cheers. <laughs> so, who likes the, uh, the the thermal bowls? I hope you've received yours now. Um, I know you won't receive them now, so they are. Uh, they're arriving uh, shortly, not quite in, in the country, but uh, um, they, they are awesome. They're great for both keeping food hot and or cold. Um, and uh, as you see, is uh, can be used as a you know, quite a stylish salad bowl. So I'm going to be doing a warm potato salad. As you saw, we, uh, we're, we're boiling potatoes here, which diced up just so they, uh, they cook faster. Uh, my favorite thing to do more in winter when it's a bit, um, uh, a bit bit cooler. I often have the oven on for different reasons anyway, so I, I parboil them and then roast them. So they're still done in about 15 minutes in total, uh, but uh, but uh, it just gives a, a crunch to uh, to the um, to the you know, from the, the roasting. It changes the change. We're not going. To, I don't do that in the summer because it's too hot to put the oven on. So to make a uh, a uh, Dijon aioli is um, is first of making a Making a mayonnaise. This is my cheat version of a mayonnaise, but it kind of works. Um, so, firstly, just break the egg. So, you sep separate the egg. Uh, you can do whatever you like with the uh, with the white. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that um, the white can go into. 
invariably midweek it goes into the dog bowl, dog bowls, which they like. Um, Karen's horrified because they hang around waiting for it. So the the mayonnaise, you know, the, the Dijon aioli is basically the mayonnaise, which is um, uh, egg yolk, which is salt and pepper, um, uh, oil, and then you've got garlic, uh, sorry, lemon juice, and then you've got garlic and some Dijon mustard. So pretty simple, pretty fast. Season that again. Don't ask how much lemon juice, just some board squeezing. Depending on how strong you like your uh, your mustard, uh, how much you like mustard depends how much you put in there. I just put a reasonable teaspoon in. Good. And remember, guys, four parties, four parties to get yourself into those bowls. Four free. Oh, I'm David. <laughs> Four parties between the 16th and Thank the 18th. Thank you. That's what she's here. Yep. <laughs> uh, let's see the garlic in, doesn't need to be peeled. Squeeze it through. You are a trusty servant. Um, cool. uh, so that's pretty simple. Just um, whisk that together. I uh, haven't put the oil in yet, obviously, but just stir that together and then uh, there are lots of great olive oils. Cobram is one that's widely available that regularly wins uh, wins in national awards. I know there's some great local ones as well, but it is a, an awesome olive oil. So uh, um, uh, encourage you if you're going to buy Australia, which is always better, um, to buy any great Australian one, but you know, Guaranteed a consistently good performance with this one. You just you dribble slowly. If you pull it all in too quickly, it won't emulsify. It'll separate out, and, and um, it's not fun. It's hard to rescue from that. So literally just dribble in. I'm, I don't know any how much I put in here, but it may look like a lot. It's dribbling pretty slowly, so it's actually not a huge amount of, of uh, the water. Water. So that is your garlic uh, garlic aioli which is just sitting there when the spuds are all done uh, i will just drain them pour them straight in and uh it'll actually cook slightly because it'll still be hot um cook the egg yolk I'm not going to knead it but um and uh it just gives a lovely lovely texture to it i don't know i need to run shit but i don't want to cook five dishes um so a surprise extra dish that i we didn't put out the ingredients for, but um, I'm, I'm added to the. Is we're going to do a pear and blue cheese salad. Um, Happens to do this on the weekend. Current food is absolutely awesome. Uh, so you get to see it. It's pretty simple. There's a similar one on the web, on the current uh, my recipe website, uh, mystores.com recipes. Um, it doesn't have the blue cheese. And to me, that adds a new level. So. You can use whatever vinegar you like. I love sherry vinegar with this, so um, so probably wouldn't use balsamic. I could use a lighter one than that, but uh, um, uh, so don't ask how much, about as much as it needs. I'd say that about a tablespoon. Because you're dressing, you're really rolling the the, uh, the leaves through the dressing after you've got it. You don't need very much dressing at all. You just need just enough to just coat them, so so the leaves aren't dry. But it's not. It, there shouldn't be dressing sitting in the bottom of the pot. You put far too much in, and it's just designed. Um, so we'll season again. We don't want to do three salads at once, so this is probably slightly more olive oil than I would normally do in a meal, but. Um, but very, very, very simple dressing that. So we will. Uh, as I said, the salads all get assembled last minute, so it's um, pretty much set, ready to go. Um, the other aspects of the, going back to the Sicilian salad, which is the one with the pink grapefruit, um, is uh, the other two um, key ingredients, uh, or three, you've got uh, rocket, you've got sh uh, fennel, which I'm about to shave. It is better if you can use fried baby fennel, unfortunately it's out of season, so I've got to have a big one, it needs a bit woodier. 
um, but I'm going to shave this in a minute and then pitted on it. Um, uh, that's so it's fairly, fairly simple, very healthy, and I have no idea why it's called Sicilian. I suppose the mafia usurped it at some point from southern Italy. Um, and uh, Half a one, it's this big, big one. I just chop that woody end off, and then if you've got a sharp knife, I mean, it's it's you've got a metal or whatever, that's fine. But if you've got a really sharp knife, it's actually really simple to shave that finely. You do need to shave it fairly finely because it also this the fennel can be quite woody and not pleasant to to eat. When it's not cooked. Basically, shop until you're bored, which I understand. Okay, so this is going to go in with these later. I'll do this now. Oops. You may say this looks like a, you know, more work than you normally do, do midweek. We're actually about three quarters away there, so it's, um, it's, uh, it'll all come together very quickly. Ready to go off. Look, any Pinot will do. I love Central Otago, but uh, this is a this is a lovely. 42 degrees south from Tasmania, so cheers of Tanya and others are, uh, are on there. Great, uh, great cool climate pinot. So, um, uh, yeah, this would be one of my favourite wines. So, um, moving on. Ah, fish. So, this is a really simple way of doing fish. Uh, we, when we had fish, my kids aren't too fussy, but they're generally not a major fan of all fish, particularly the stronger fish variety. So more commonly we do salmon probably three quarters of the time. It's a really easy way of jazzing up salmon. And if for whatever reason the kids don't like maybe the hotter stuff, so I'm going to be crossing it in Cajun. Uh, really, really you'll see how insane and simple it is, but it really lifts the salmon to a new level. If you don't like Cajun, you can absolutely use Duca. Uh, you can use do Moroccan. You can really use any of the spice blends. Well, probably not about chicken. <laughs> The mushroom curry, but but you know you can certainly use the probably not payout, but the, the Moroccan Cajun. Um, uh, what else have we got without the cat out of the bag? Uh, Mexican <laughs> um, uh, Suma Duca. Pick you one, and you'll see how incredibly simple it is. So you just get a bowl, pour it in. You'll see when I do it how much you gather for yourself, how much you, you need. It's probably about a table, or a bit more than a tablespoon. So about that much is what I've put in. It's pretty simple. Salmon. I start sneezing, it's because that's a uh, very pungent Cajun. Yeah, it's delicious. Sorry. Really simple. So the fry pan's on hot. Uh, I am going to be dry frying this, which I know some would be horrified by. It's partly because it's not on for very long, and secondly, because salmon is a really oily fish, uh, within 30 seconds of it starting to cook, the, uh, the oils will be coming out of the skin, start the skin side down, and, um, and uh, so it's going to have some extra oil in there very, very quickly. And it does just help to fry up, the, uh, to crisp up the, uh, the salmon skin. So very, very simple. It's coated on the top there. The skin side down. Skin side down. Uh, one of the things always with cooking fish is it 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 uh, can be a bit temperamental or a bit the fine line between cooking it enough and not making it dry. Um, by cooking it skin side down, you do give yourself a bit more latitude because you actually cook it almost three quarters of the way through with the skin, and it's sort of it's slow. And you've got the it's coming through the, the small layer of fat on there as well, so it uh, it just protects without drying out too much. You, when you flip it, it's on heat for about a minute when you turn it off and it continues to cook on the residual heat for another minute or so and then it's done. So really simple. So obviously if you've got a fussy eater that doesn't either like the spice blender or it's a different one, then you can just 
switch out now and not uh, not continue doing all four fillets. So then you have those cooking away. You see touching the fish and then quickly duck off screen and I wash my hands. And here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> Sorry, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, it's smelling great already, David. I've never, awesome. seen, never seen you short of work. <laughs> when it comes to cooking, I'm a student. Always looking to learn. Uh, so look, no protein has touched this, so I don't need to, to wash it. Um, as I normally would cook with a hot soapy water sink beside me and would absolutely wash uh, both knife and, uh, and board as I as I go. So we're getting pretty close to being ready. I'm just going to quickly check on the spuds so I'm looking, but... so that, that salmon will probably take five or six minutes to cook. The potatoes are actually done already. So I'm just going to steam some, uh, steam some broccoli on the top, I have washed this broccoli. Broccoli would be our favoured green vegetable. It's probably the one with the highest amount of, uh, amount of people like kale and a bunch of other new age superfoods that, um, as I keep saying to my 19 year old daughter, if you tell me more, more about another superfood, I'll sell you a bridge because you won't be born into that. But anyway, the, each to their own. There's some great food out there, but it's also a lot of marketing jargon. The uh, broccoli is right up there, it's very cheap. Um, I like kale. <laughs> anyway, I can eat kale as if it's drenched in olive oil and uh, deep fry and fried and other roasted, which probably takes away some of the health benefits. Uh, so we're just going to pop that in there to steam to uh, to go on the side, and pretty much done. I mean, we're really just waiting. The spuds are done. I need to assemble the salads. Um, uh, get on to do those that in a sec. The, the, you, you can't really see it there, but that's already cooked almost halfway through. So I'll leave it there for another minute or so on the, with the skin side and then flip it over. You'll see in a second with the skin, it does crisp up. Your call, some people love eating the skin, some people don't like it so much. I do enjoy it, but unfortunately in our family, the uh, the dogs tend to, uh, and they, they love the skin as well, so they tend to uh, they tend to, uh, to, to win out on that front. Okay, we will finish off the Sicilian salad. So, firstly, just dress your salad and make it modest. Sorry, help. Oh. Boom, boom. <laughs> Best salad server tongs on the planet. So you see there really wasn't very much dressing in there at all, but uh, as you'll see shortly, it's, um, it's just do this in a bowl, then all you're doing is making the dressing slightly moist and slightly flavoured. It's not, the idea is absolutely, there. after I poured this out, you will absolutely no dressing left in the bottom. It's coated, it's, it's, because it was emulsified, it's slightly coated all the uh, salad leaves and uh, and make some moist and flavoured, but so looks good. How easy is this? So as I say, look like it might look like a bit of prep at the start, but. All comes together very, very quickly. So just on that, the fish kind of has to be eaten. The fish kind of has to be eaten when it's cooked, so you do have to have everything else. It does kind of have to come together at the right time because the salad will wilt, not straight away, but you've got 15, 20 minutes, but it, it doesn't have an hour. So um, but the fish certainly should be plated up and served pretty much when it's ready. So. 
So this is now pretty much done on that side. Smelling delicious, mm. slightly fishy, but also cajun. So I love about these tongs, you just slide underneath. I know not everyone loves them, but I do. Um, slide underneath like that and um, twist over. If, uh, once again, if it's the winter and the oven is on as it often is um, for different reasons, uh, I would let this go for another minute or so and then just as I would with, with steak or, or, or other proteins and put it, this is what chefs do, put it in the oven to finish off. It just gives you a bit more control over, over how it cooks and ensures that it cooks, uh, it cooks through. So that's, you can able to see that, but that's, oops, that's lost it. That's uh, just a silly salad. How simple and delicious is that? Uh, then we're doing the, um, the pear across the pear. Uh, just so it's a, the pear and blue cheese is, once again, I, I like rocket, but the, I wouldn't normally serve two rocket salads uh, on the same meal, but you're not eating it, so that's okay. It's okay for you, but I, I do like the rocket, the pepperiness with this particular salad. There's other, salad, other salads I use, like baby greens or baby spinach or or mixed greens. We do have salads most nights of the week. Um, most common is just mixed greens with balsamic um, vinaigrette. Really, really simple, fast, and, and um, yeah, nice and healthy. So, uh, so I happen to cook this during the week on the weekend at home, and Karen liked it so much I thought I'd add it for tonight. Once again, not peeled. They have been washed, but haven't peeled these pears. I prefer these burbosque sort of pears. These are just baby ones. Um, I prefer the flavour of them this is, and the texture. They're slightly firmer than your traditional pack them, I think they are pears. So literally just slicing those thinly, pretty simple. Uh, the, oh, just so now, now it's pretty much so simple. It's assembly. We'll bring back our sherry vinegar, vinegar, sherry. sherry Dressing vinaigrette. So I assume most of you know, you may not, that if you're reading an overseas res uh, recipe, particularly one from the States, this is called the rugula. And I think actually a lot of, some of the European countries also can call it a rugula, so rather than, rather than rocket. So if you're wondering what the rugula is, it's rocket. So once again, a person for a baby rocket, it's just uh, not quite as woody. If you do have a veggie garden, this stuff grows like a weed. So um, you've got to keep on top of it. Which so you took ours out, couldn't possibly eat that much rocket. So once again, pretty simple. Not much dressing in there, so it's uh, it has coated all the leaves. Sorry, see the bottom of the. Uh, this once again is a, is a, there are some salads where you put it all in together and mix it through. Both of these happen to be layered salads, so it's um, you've got the uh, the rocket, sprinkle some pear over the top. It's already seasoned because the dressing was seasoned. Some would argue you should season the salad again. I'm not a believer in that. Um, do make sure you season a little bit, or else it's a bit bland. Um, walnuts. These ones, so quickly, these ones are actually broken up a bit, they're not whole, whole walnuts, but it's really simple, just do a very quick chop if you want to uh, make it a bit smaller. The, um, if they are whole walnuts, that's probably a little bit big to, to uh, they're too big, they're just not pleasant to eat, so I would normally chop those. But you don't want to crush walnuts, they're too small. A lot, of this, a lot of food is about texture, so it's got to be the right texture, and the right size texture for what it's being paired with. Pardon me. Pardon me. Uh, <laughs> it's warm 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 fire warm. today. <laughs> so one of those baby pears, pears was really... No. No. Look at those knife skills. Ambulance is on hand.
And then the crowning part of this, this is my absolute favourite, favourite ingredients is blue cheese, which I am a nice old woman. I know. <laughs> this, is, this is Stilton. Absolute favourite is Santa Gurs, S T A G U R, two words. Um, it is a bit, it's, it, look, it's not a cheap cheese, but it's um, certainly it's in our local coals. It's absolutely to die for creaminess, but and it's not French, it's important. I apologise for those that are supporting uh, the Australian produce, some great Australian blue cheese as well, particularly some of the goat's cheese ones. Um, but uh, this won't happen to be a silk smile. All right. <laughs> Crumble over the top. The, the saltiness of the blue cheese against the uh, sweetness of the pears, the pepperiness of the rocket, it's too dark. For. And the crunch of the walnuts. It's one of those classic cafe salads. Yum. Yeah, I need to just peel off screen again and wash my hands, sorry. <laughs> All served on the lovely new platters, don't they look great? Can you all see that? Looks awesome. Mm. Forgot, potato salad. So, broccoli's done. Um, Strain the spice, sorry. It's obviously one of the benefits of this, the tri cookware is it does have a glass lid. You don't get quite the same element of over, over or oven type heating as you do with Como, but for once again, for the purposes that most saucepans are used for, it's there's some arguments that it's a it's a more it has a yeah, the attributes are outweigh the negatives. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get these bowls. Fantastic. Smell that. Mm, yeah. See? Stay cool handles. So that will see, this will actually start to cook the mayonnaise because it's obviously quite hot. You don't want that, it does give a slightly different texture. I quite like it, but if you're not such a fan, then obviously you let them cool down. Yeah. For being an aioli, this is quite thick. It's much thicker than the other, more vinaigrette based, because um, the egg yolk, but uh, I did only do two spuds, I probably would have done, anyhow, probably the boys are, I probably would have done three of those large ones. And we certainly don't do one potato per person in the five person family, so for those that can see that. So, we're pretty much done, I'm just going to, uh, I'll show you plating up in just one sec, oh, sorry, I'll show you plating up now. Um, so, Grab a plate, grab some of the broccoli, which uh, is, is is lovely and being steamed is probably marginally over the dish took my off it, but it's um, two pieces of broccoli is probably enough given the amount of salads we've got. We'll grab one of the salmon. So if you have people that don't like skin or dogs that do, then it's pretty simple. You literally just grab that, look back. Serve that up. So you can see the Cajun is all has blackened up, which is lovely. It gives a real, uh, uh, real smoking. It brings out the smokiness and so on. It's absolutely superb. And we are done. I'm not going to plate up those next three, but they're they're pretty much ready to go. Also, so really, we would then just sit down at the table. Um, plate it up for the protein. In this case, also the broccoli. Three salads, or normally actually two. And uh, pretty much done. I didn't check the time, but we've been going for 40 minutes, which is a bit longer than I normally would because A, I did one extra salad, and B, 
I was talking to you. So that sort of slows things down. So certainly within half an hour, normally we'll be sitting down to to the meal. So hope you liked that a lot. Um, hasn't been any questions, I gather, because I haven't had any come through to me. So I guess you don't have any. I was. I do want to quickly show you also one dessert. I don't normally do dessert. We don't normally do dessert midweek. I we often don't do them again. But we. Um, this is my one of my most recent all time favourite desserts. It is on uh, the recipe site, so you can go and find it yourself. It will look much more appetising after today because Joyce will take a much better photo of it than I can with my iPhone. But it still looks pretty good. And that it's a ricotta and berry salad. Now, I don't have time to cook because it does take an hour to cook, but it's more the speed of making it. So if you grab, grab your version of this, I'm sure you've all got one. Go to, you ready for this? www.mychefstoolbox.com.au forward slash recipes. Search for a cotter, you can't miss it. It's for cotter and berry salad. Uh, sorry, cotter and berry cake. It's not really hot in front of these lights. Um, it's literally melt 125 grams of butter, put in 500 grams of ricotta, which I did before just to, to mix through. Uh, the, then Break, uh, break into their three eggs. I'm actually old school. I tend to, well, you can't on this obviously, but I would often break on the side of something. I know there is a school of thought you're supposed to break your eggs by tapping them on a flat surface. One teaspoon of milk extract. <laughs> Don't do that in parties. <laughs> it says one cup of sugar. I actually find half a cup is about right. And it's actually about half a cup. <laughs> I'm doing a cup of flour. Self-raising flour, obviously, I'm sure you know, but if you don't have self-raising, you can do one kilo of clay and I think it's one tablespoon. A tablespoon of, of um, baking powder. Let's mix all that together. It's really quite moist because of the uh, both the eggs and the ricotta, so it's a very it's a very very moist almost custody like cake when it's cooked. It's a superb mixture of the flavours of the ricotta and the, and the raspberries is to die for. And so if you add raspberries to your brownie, which is a chef's toolbox thing, it's not traditional, but it certainly uh, is amazing. Brownies aren't the same without them. Uh, you always have some of these or your favourite brand in the freezer. We need a cup of raspberries or more, approximately, and ooh, could we have some Sorry, I surprised I didn't miss it. Don't worry about it. So, literally, it's that fast. It's that's, that's it. It may or may not look that appetizing now. It will by the time it's cooked. Uh, it's in the oven for about, about 150 degrees for. Uh, for one hour, so you're obviously not going to, I'm not going to sit here and talk to you for an hour, so you're not going to see it cooked. You literally just dab that, pull that, and then dab it into whatever your favourite shape is. I love the Kugelhoff because it gives this, gives a really almost professional decorative sort of finish, and it's just idiot proof. Um, so you just pull that in, push it down, put it in the oven, middle shelf for about an hour, keep an eye on it after 50 minutes, but about an hour. Um, turn it halfway through if your oven's not even and it's uh, not cooking evenly on either side. and. Uh, Really, really simple. You saw, I mean, what was that? Two minutes, three minutes maximum. So, and just a to die for dessert. So, I think that's. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I think that's um, pretty much everything. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, there haven't been any questions. So, either I was incredible at explaining, or there's only two of you on, or. But anyway, I hope, I hope you've really enjoyed it. Uh, this will be. Uh, on our YouTube channel, yep, on our YouTube channel uh, this afternoon. So for those that couldn't make it, or if you're desperate to uh, to re uh, re see 
me doing what I've been doing, then uh, then that will be up this afternoon. So will all the recipes. Um, some of them are already there, but uh, but we will certainly be uploading all of them by this afternoon, all um, all professionally shot by Joyce. And uh, yeah, this is a midweek meal. It's it's been forty five minutes, five dishes, which I so we'll normally do three, and uh, I wouldn't be talking to you guys. So. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty fast, pretty simple. And if you'd like to see another one of these another time, then just shout. I'm happy to uh, happy to do it. It'd be great. Thanks, everyone. Bye.